Gaming with your friends is just better. I feel like we all know that, but if you've ever sat down to find a title and play, you'd know that can be pretty difficult, and it can be even more challenging when perhaps the people or the special person that you want to play with doesn't play many games, doesn't play games at all, or perhaps wants to hang out in person. Well, luckily for you, you came to the right video, so let me introduce to you a bunch of my favorite couch-friendly co-op games that you can drag any friend to, even if they're kicking and screaming. Put your spacesuits on, man the controls, and prepare to launch into a neon galaxy full of perils on lovers in a dangerous space-time. This one to four player adventure will see you launching into the nether to combat the evil forces of anti-love. In order to crush these haters, you'll need to work together to operate all facets of the neon battleship, dash between corridors and operate the guns, fire up the shields and control the thrusters. It's simple enough for anyone to get into, but getting the crew to work together as a well-oiled machine that's the tricky part, but you better work it out because your neon battle ball is all that stands between you and the cold reaches of space. If games like Hades and the Binding of Isaac taught us anything, people love to slam through dungeons. So meet Ember Knights, one of the newest games on this list. Playing as the last spark in the universe, you'll embody the Ember Knights as you attempt to put down a mad sorcerer that has siphoned the life out of the Ember Tree. This one is a fast-paced hack-and-slash roguelite dungeon crawler that will see you and up to three friends combining powerful weapons, skills and relics to slam anything that moves on your quest to beat the heck out of the evil wizard and his cronies. Castle Crashes is an ode to the classic charming arcade hack and slashes of the past. Playable with up to four, you'll be whacking, smashing, slicing, and dashing your way through the kingdom and its goofy adversaries in a chaotic romp to save the beloved kingdom and your beloved princess. Beyond the main quest, the game also includes multiplayer mini games along with several challenge modes to keep the fun times rolling. Co-op games are fun and all, but sometimes perhaps you'd rather turn the guns at each other. Well, here's Rounds, a roguelite shooter where each game gets more intense than the last. Flex your noodle arms in 1v1 duels as you blast each other to smithereens. The losing player will then get to choose an upgrade to spice it up and hopefully counter their opponent, and so on until the duel turns into a completely chaotic clusterfuck. Now, I did say Rounds was a 1v1 game, but courtesy of its very expansive and large mod community, you can even play this one online with up to 16 players. Overcooked 2 will always find its way onto these lists for the sheer chaos it can cause. This one's an adorable co-op cooking game that looks and sounds cute, but is actually a speedrun path to destroying any and all relationships. Its cute, colourful overtones are shattered by some of the most ball-busting, rage-inducing gameplays. You fumble around the kitchen to meet out your customers' needs whilst on a time limit. Screw all of the food hygiene guidelines, you'll be throwing meat, soups, and vegetables all over the kitchen to get the job done. Just don't throw any controllers in the meantime. Maybe avoid playing this game with people that are prone to road rage and or spend too much time on Twitter. Back to roguelike dungeon crawling with Wizard of Legend. This one is a truly action-packed game that will see you putting down the wand and instead throwing magic imbued fists like a lunatic straight out of Black Clover. The combat in this game really excels with its quick pacing, magic and wicked chain combination spells, all of which you and one other player will use to overcome the Council of Magic's Chaos Trial, where you'll fight dangerous conjured foes to earn your place amongst the strongest wizards to ever do it. As someone that loves to see my friends crack under pressure, keep talking and nobody explodes is one of my favorites. The game is simple. One unfortunate soul is trapped with the bomb and is the only one that can see it whilst the others have the manual to defuse it. This causes a hot potato-like game of information back and forth as you attempt to defuse the bomb before it goes boom. It is a truly awesome test of your communication abilities. And whilst often being stressful, it is also a complete blast of a time, no pun intended. As Dusk Falls is an interactive drama game that explores the lives of two families across 30 years, which all begins with a robbery going wrong in 1998. Being an interactive game, it's essentially a movie that you and your friends can control with the choices they make, as the very lives of the characters in the game depend on those choices. If you enjoyed Telltale-esque games such as The Walking Dead or even games such as Detroit Become Human, then this one is worth checking out and is excellent for people who don't perhaps play a lot of games. It Takes Two is the crowning achievement of cooperative games so far. It's an awesome experience that follows along in the shoes of Cody and May, a couple going through troubling times after they reveal their intent to divorce in front of their daughter. Through video game bullshit science, childhood wonder, and the seedy magic of the Book of Love, the two find themselves turned into dolls, shrunken and forced to confront their failing relationship as they explore their own distorted house and memories. 
This one is absolutely full of things to do from countless mini games to 15-ish hours on the main storyline. Solve puzzles or die together trying in Death Squared. One for the group that may be hunting for a bit of a brain scratcher, it has long since remained one of my favorites. It's a game all about guiding colored boxes into their color-coded goals, which sounds simple enough, but I hope you've prepared for many an unplanned and unfortunate explosive demise. Prepare to put your cooperation and communication to the test as you attempt to overcome many deadly traps and hazards in this lovely and challenging couch co-op. Human Fall Flat is a game all about controlling wacky, drunken sandbag humanoids that have to utilize good old physics to solve a multitude of puzzles. Playable with eight online or two locally, it's a great time that often devolves into attempted murder, as you forsake the puzzles in favor of improvised gang beast style wrestling matches. This one is a thoroughly enjoyable and light-hearted physics platformer that provided you don't take too seriously, everyone will hopefully come out unscathed from. Spiders with laser swords is certainly not the combination you want happening in real life, but in spider heck it makes for one hell of a time. Battle your friends in chaotic web-slinging duels to the death with every laser weapon imaginable, or instead opt to team up and pulverize waves of enemies that wish to end you like they were a can of raid. Whether you want to verse each other or play together, this fighting game is addictive and offers some awesome traversal parkour with combat that will make you feel like General Grievous. If you've ever wanted a co-op game that captures the feeling of being a kid and riding off to explore with a friend, then knights and bikes would like to say hello. You'll play as two young children as they uncover an ancient island with their pet goose, Captain Honkers. Questionable goose name aside, this game really captures childlike wonder and wholesome energy in a bottle, and then uses it to propel you and a friend on a lovely adventure with a nice side course of ancient curses, imagination and frisbees all wrapped up into a really nice 2D hand-drawn art style, making it well worth the play. Unravel 2 is a family-friendly swingers experience all about forming bonds, even if in this case it's very literally tying yourself together. You and your fellow yarn creature will wash up on a cold grey shore of an island alone, but after coming together you'll be off to chase the spark of adventure. Work together and take advantage of your yarn properties to swing, bounce and propel yourself through a world and watch on as it blossoms around you. This game features some lovely playful puzzle platforming and is honestly just a treat to play through. Much like Mario Party, Pummel Party has two objectives in mind. One, give you a great time, and two, systematically turn your friend's competitiveness into a sharpened blade as you can only helplessly watch on. If you like the idea of rolling dice to get around a board, fun quick paced minigames and a lot of arguments, then this one should well and truly have you covered. There can only be one winner, so you'll have to expect some cutthroat behavior. Playable with four to eight players locally or online, I just ask you remember one thing. Hate your friends, not the game. If you want a cinematic experience that will make your cold gamer heart feel a whole rainbow's worth of emotion, then A Way Out is your first stop. An awesome split-screen co-op only narrative adventure that follows along with two unlikely partners, Leo and Vincent, as they attempt to settle their business. Only problem is that both of them have found themselves behind prison bars that they'll be needing to escape first. Team up with a friend and get ready to go on an on-the-run adventure with a quality that is only found in very few co-op games. Hazelight Studio has put out two of the best co-op only games and I'd highly recommend checking out both this game and It Takes Two. Portal 2 is one of the classics that has long since remained as not only one of the best games ever made but also one of the best co-opable experiences to be found. Seriously, if you somehow haven't dipped your toes into the perpetual testing facility, then now is the time. This is one of the most fine-tuned puzzle games still ever to come out, in which you'll make use of portal guns to navigate through the objectives that good old Gladys is giving you. I'm sure most of you probably know what portal is at this point, so we're moving on to a moving out. This chaotic whirlwind of a game gives a new meaning to couch co-ops, as you'll more than likely be throwing said couch through a window. Join the expert removalists at Smooth Moves to become a fart, aka a furniture arrangement and relocation technician. The job is simple, move furniture to a truck and probably totally accidentally cause ungodly amounts of property damage as you throw caution to the wind in order to get the job done as fast as possible. You're here for the money and time is money, so ignore the tears and emotional damage that you cause the property owners. Ever wanted to become Houdini? Well, welcome to the one-stop shop at Escape Academy. Here you'll train to become the ultimate escapist with their top-of-the-line curriculum such as bomb defusal, hacking your very own professor who happens to be a super AI, racing other students in escape rooms, and learning how not to drown while solving puzzles. 
They promised that you would learn at the Escape Academy, not that you'd survive it. If you enjoy escape rooms, this one features over a dozen of them designed by people who make real ones in real life, which is pretty neat. Meet Jeff and Deborah, two adorable Kiwi birds that happen to run a post office. Kiwi is a wholesome cooperative puzzler in which you'll jump, flap, peck, and booty slam your way across a whimsical post office full of bells, levers, and buttons to get the post out on time. Show the bird brains in the real world post offices how it's done as you'll overcome all of the difficulties that two small, armless birds would have operating an entire post office by themselves. And believe me, you'll probably find quite a few problems there. Kiwi manages to remain a somewhat relaxing time despite all of the required communication, which often can't be said for most of these co-op games, and for that reason, I recommend it a lot. If you're looking for a bit more horror in your life, then I'd recommend The Quarry. Following in the footsteps of games such as Until Dawn, it's a choice-focused interactive narrative adventure. The cast is a group of teenage counsellors who happen to throw a party out at Hackett's Quarry, a desolate remote location that may be harbouring a deadly secret. As things take a turn for the worst, your decisions will be the only thing that keeps the cast alive as they battle to see sunlight. Curiosity killed the cat, now try convincing your friend not to check out the noise they heard on the other side of the spooky trapdoor. If luchadors, lariats, challenging platforming and metroidvania get your loins tingling, then you gotta play Guacamelee 2. It's time to tag team with up to three of your friends and let the luchadors fly as this game becomes a tango of flying fists. A new evil has arisen and our retired luchador All Might must put the mask back on and prepare to uppercut and pile drive the new threat into the dust. Featuring genuinely difficult platforming, a captivating colourful aesthetic and really fun combat, it kind of surprises me that Guacamelee is so underrated. Stick Fight the game is all but perfectly summed up in its name. Take on a character that reaches the limit of my artistic capabilities and then go to town on other stick men in a physics based fighting game that is full of interactive levels. Let the stick fists fly fly and discover who the cream of the crop is amongst your friends. As far as local fighting games go, this one is about as simple as possible to pick up and get into, and for that reason it's worth a recommendation. Now most people know Cuphead by this point, I hope it's a genuinely impressive game on its own, but in case you didn't know, you can also play it in co-op, which just makes it all the more enjoyable personally. Inspired by cartoons of the 1930s, this game is almost impossible to beat in the art department, and will also give you a run for money just to beat it in general. Play as Cuphead and Mugmen as you venture into strange worlds to overcome many wacky bosses and pay back your debt to the devil by beating his ass too. You know, maybe you and your player too just need to cry. Spirit Pharaoh is a game all about building bonds, establishing friendships, and then ultimately letting go. In this experience, you'll play as Stella, boatman of the River Styx, and her cat Daffodil, as you care for your spirit friends before releasing their souls into the great beyond. It's a cozy management sim where you'll build up your fairy before drowning it in a sea of tears as you fulfill the fairy master's role of sending your passengers to the afterlife. Divinity 2 Original Sin is perfect for those of you in need of a nerdy RPG adventure together. Featuring a truly expansive world, a solid narrative, way too many hours of gameplay and deep tactical turn-based combat, Divinity is well worth checking out if you want a game that can keep you company for a long time. It's from the creators of Baldur's Gate 3, which can also be played in local split-screen. Between the two of these games, you can't really go wrong. If you want a game in D&D's world that is slightly newer, then opt for Baldur's Gate 3. Whereas, if you have an aversion to the D20, then Divinity is inspired by D&D, but not in its world. Both games are truly expansive and massive RPGs that you should absolutely check out together. Now, hopefully with all of these games listed, you will have found a few games to play with your friends together on the couch. If you've made it this far, thank Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate your time and feel free to leave a like on the video or perhaps comment what you'd like me to talk a little bit more about. Or just say hi, you know, that'd be really nice honestly, I'd appreciate that too. But as per always, I'm Fizz, your local game dealer, and I will see you again soon.